Hi, I'm Steve Cunningham. I'm the Director of Research and Education at the American Institute for Economic Research. Joining me is William Baldwin, a lifetime business journalist. He recently stepped down as the editor at Forbes magazine to pursue his, his real passion, and that is to write about investment strategies. Thank, thank you for meeting with us, Bill. We're here to talk about uh, inflation and deflation risks associated with uh, retirement accounts. Uh, I think the traditional wisdom was you would have a 401k, you'd roll it into an annuity, and uh, just uh, expand that over your lifetime. Uh, what are the risks and what are the ways that you could structure things to protect yourself? Steve, think bond bubble. When you have an annuity, that's like a bond. And if there's a bond bubble and all these lemmings are buying treasuries paying 2%, that's your problem when you buy an annuity, because when you buy an annuity, you're getting essentially, indirectly, a portfolio of bonds from an insurance company. And if there's no inflation, you're fine. You've got this guaranteed income stream until you live to be 100. That's just great. But what if there is inflation? The annuity won't protect you the way it is. You've got to think about that. And there are options in these annuities to protect you for inflation? Well, there are a lot of ways to handle this problem. If you thought about the problem, you can deal with it. It's not necessarily cheap and easy, but you can deal with it. One way to deal with it is to go to the insurance company and say, I want to step up. All the insurance companies that offer annuities, all the big ones that I know of, have this as an option. Never heard of this. How does that work? Okay, let's just suppose that the money you have set aside would entitle you to $2,000 a month for life. You're now 65, and perhaps you can buy that annuity for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um, you could say instead, I don't want 2000 for life. I want you to start me at 1800 bump me to 1900 after a couple of years, bump me to 2000 bump me to 2100 You're expecting that prices, your rent, your uh, cost of living, your fuel bill will be going up every couple of years. So you build that into your income stream accordingly. You can do that. That's pretty affordable. Wow, that's really interesting. Uh, I've heard you talk about another approach in which you take uh, Social Security early and with the potential of, of uh, switching to uh, a different payment schedule at age 70. This is a nifty deal that Social Security allows you to take back a decision and start all over again. You know in fact, it's possible. such a good deal. I have to caution you on this. It's such a good deal that the people running Social Security would like to take it away. So you can't bank on it sticking around forever. But right now, here's how the rule works you could start taking Social Security at age 62. You wait around, see if you live. If you don't get run over by a truck, you're now 70. You know what you could do? You could pay back all that money you took for eight years and get a higher income beginning at age 70. If you're in a position to do this because you have money available, you're, you're of sufficient means that you have that cash sitting around, what you're doing when you're 70 and you buy your way back into a higher Social Security payment is you're essentially buying yourself a lifetime annuity beginning at age 70, and guess what? The terms are extremely attractive because Social Security is one of those rare things in the investment world which is protected against inflation. It's <laughs> amazing. Are there other ways to structure uh, annuities? Well, here's another strategy that I find is very common among many financial planners. Uh, let's just suppose that you have $500,000 you want to put into annuities at age 65. You don't put it all in at one, uh, one swoop. You put in maybe a third of it, 170000 today. Turn 70. The, some of the other money, hopefully, has grown a little bit if you've invested it conservatively. And you buy another slug of annuities beginning at age 70. And then if you still are alive at age 75, you still have some more money. You can buy some at age 75. So you've been buying annuities at three different prices. And there, there's a couple of good reasons why this would help you. Number one. That money, that 330000 you put away at age 65, just set aside to grow, is going to grow a little bit, unless you have really rotten luck in the market. So you'll have more money to buy annuities with. Number two, this is very important, you're now buying the second chunk of income support payments for life, beginning at age 70. And they'll give you better terms for a simple reason. You don't have as many years to live. So your dollars go farther then. Right. If, you, if you can really afford to, you might do it in three chunks, 65, 70, 75. Not a lot of Americans can. Unfortunately, all too many Americans have put aside too little in their 401ks, and they're going to be having a hard time covering the rent at age 66, never mind 
these complicated schemes for ensuring a rising income stream. If the interest rates have risen as a result of inflation, the nominal rates have risen as a result of inflation, you'd be buying at higher rates too, right? Yeah, let's explain why that would be true. When you buy an annuity, you're getting back two things. You're getting back your principal. Mm -hmm. They can afford to give you back your principal because they know you're not going to live past 100. And mm -hmm. secondly, you're getting some interest, okay? okay. So every $100,000 that I put into annuities buys me a certain monthly income stream and it depends on how long I'm going to live or how long they think I probably will live. And it depends on the interest rates. They're taking the 100000 and buying, let's just say, treasury securities with it. Right now, inflation is around zero. Right now, long-term treasuries yield 2 or 3%, which is close to nothing. But what if we do get inflation? It's predictable that uh, treasury interest rates will go up. So let's suppose that happens in the next five years. Mm -hmm. Five years from now, there is inflation. It's 3%. The 2% rate you see on medium-term treasuries now will become 5 in all likelihood. The 3% rate you see on long treasuries will become 6 if inflation kicks in. So we're imagining a world in which you start out at age 65, happy as a clam. You've got a wonderful income stream and an ability to cover the cost of living. And then at age 70, you wake up and suddenly your food costs more, your medicine costs more, your, your, your fuel costs more. Well, if we have inflation at that point, every dollar you put into annuities at age 70 will buy you more. Again, because you're older, mm -hmm. and more importantly, because current interest rates are higher. And that will be reflected in the kind of pricing you get from the insurance company. They'll give you a better deal. These are some great ideas. Thank you for speaking with us today. Thank you, Steve. I'd like to thank Bill for joining us here at the American Institute for Economic Research. If you'd like to learn more about us, you can visit us at AIER.org.